yeah, and I don't mind riding with other people. I don't mind riding with the right people, but for me, the hardest part is scheduling. It's just like hard for me to schedule with people. It's like I've waited around to meet people to do BDRs and they never come. And then the, before you know it, the season's over and it's the I can't ride the BDR anymore. Or I wait for people and then I ride on a BDR with them and they, they turn around and stop. They're too afraid to keep going. So it's like you drive a thousand miles and then somebody quits on you. It's like, I can't do that no more. So it's just hard for me to, to schedule with people. And like, it's nothing personal to people because I will ride with the right people. Scheduling is the problem. And I don't wanna, I don't wanna make plans too much. I don't wanna deter from my schedule too much. Cause then I hose myself waiting for other people. I ain't got time for all that again this year. I ain't got time to be turning around unless I choose to turn around. <laughs> and I ain't got time to be waiting on people. I think the best way for me is like to do smaller rides. If I've never ridden with somebody on whatever their bike, I'm not just gonna bring them on a BDR no more. Can't do it, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'll learn my lesson with that. And that shit don't make for good video either anyway. <laughs> people quitting. Nobody wants to see that. Just gotta do smaller rides with people to see how you ride. And, Cause I mean, some some people might be a good rider, but they don't have like the same bike. And then they're complaining about their suspension and they need to stop more and they gotta go slower over the washboards and all this shit that I don't want to deal with. So I do a lot of them on my own when I can. And I'll bring pre people like Miller. Me and Miller had a good time riding. I better focus. <laughs> Myself in trouble before I even get into Death Valley. But I think like it's up to everybody, you know? It's up to your own decision. It depends on what you're riding, what kind of a rider you are, what kind of experience you have. Like, do you have experience in Death Valley? Like, a lot of stuff. Cause some people prefer to ride solo, especially on a smaller bike, like a DRZ 400 or a 350s or EXC 500s. Like, then your only concern is like tires and breakdowns. You can't carry as much gear on the smaller bikes either. But on the bigger bikes, you don't want to carry too much gear. I see people that like say I carry a lot of gear because I was riding around on a BMW GS Adventure, it's like, I don't even carry a full camping loadout. I think you need to check your own gear. Weigh your own gear sometime. Cause you don't want a lot of gear on these things. If you can help it. Off-road, like, weight is your enemy off-road. If you can get rid of it, get rid of it. Oh, there's cattle. Some little cattle. Hi. Hi there. I think you can ride this solo. I think people can ride this solo. It depends on what bike you're riding, how you're packing, your, your riding experience, your traveling experience. Cause like doing Death Valley is a little different. You need to be carrying water and you have a breakdown out here. Like it's gonna be a while. And that's what I mean. Like you could get in on these BDRs and you can be by yourself for 24 hours. You can break down to be by yourself for 24 hours waiting for help. And you can do it out here, Idaho, like some of these BDRs, it's almost like being in a third world country because you could call for a life flight, but it's going to take them a while to get to you. Some of these places. There was a guy on the Idaho BDR who broke down. He dropped his bike in the water on the stream crossing bike wouldn't start he was there for 24 hours waiting for help tow truck and nobody even passed him it can be deadly if you're in the right spots and you don't have communication so it's possible to do these solo but I don't recommend it on big bikes like I'm doing it's only because I know this isn't that hard of a section it's probably one of the easiest sections on the California BDR 
I mean, I say that because if I keep my bike upright, it's all good. But if I drive my bike, then I'm working hard, and burning time, burning energy, burning resources, which doesn't always help. I'm just being selective about what I do. I know this section's not that bad. I know section three is not super gnarly, but it's worse than this. And like, I'm just gonna do a small bike on that because it's thicker. There's spots that are thicker and like, and just the little bike by myself and the thicker stuff is like, I can do that. Cause let's face it, these BDRs are cool. And ideally these bigger bikes are kind of ideal for them cause you can ride to them, ride on them. It's just some of them have sections or spots and certain sections that are just rough and they give big bikes trouble. So you can either struggle your way through it and muscle your way through it or a lot of people do is they just go around it. They ride these big bikes on the BDRs that they go around the trouble spots and that's not a bad idea really. So it's, it's a way to get them done and most of it done. And, and the easiest way and most cost efficient way is to do it on a motorcycle. But like California, like Idaho, it's got a couple spots that some people might want to go around. But like California, it's cool, but it's got more spots that are, you need to go around or that are troublesome for big bikes. The hell, it's got whole sections that are troublesome. You can make it whatever kind of adventure you want. You can make it a tough one, you can make it an easy one, you can make it a dirt bike one, you can make it a big bike one. And they're getting better at making the BDRs. They're starting to get like a main route that's doable for a lot of people. And then they have harder sections coming off of it to give people more variety and stuff, which I think is kind of cool. It's getting better. They're getting better at it. And like sometimes they just don't have other routes to do, right? Like if they could do a, an alternate route, they, I'm sure they would. They just don't always have alternate routes. The BDRs are pretty cool. I'm going to ride the BDRs as much as I can. And I'll use whatever bike I have to to get them done. Like even if I had somebody with me, like Seth wants to do some of this stuff. Even if I had him with me, I still want to ride the small bike on like section three, one, two, and three. So just because I think it's funner. I mean, I want to go fast. And that's why this big bike's good. Except for in thick stuff, then it ain't so fast. <laughs> I should say, I ain't so fast. <laughs> the BDRs are fun though. And there's some pretty spectacular sections on almost all of them. There's some, there's some good stuff to see. If you're gonna ride a BDR solo, do yourself a favor make sure you have satellite communication and don't make it your first experience off-road or if you got a new bike don't make it your first experience off-road with that bike and also just understand that when you do make that call on satellite communication it could take a long time before help arrives to you hope you liked the video give me a thumbs up if you did comment like subscribe all that good stuff i will see you later